episode number one of Vegan Alternative Kimchi Trilogy. <laughs> Welcome back to Cheap Lazy Vegan and another video. Today I'm so excited because I'm finally bringing you guys my mom's famous water kimchi recipe. Yes, water kimchi. Bur kimchi. Okay, bur kimchi. Korean people, <laughs> our language is very literal, okay? Bur is water in Korean and then kimchi is obviously kimchi, okay? So bur kimchi is water kimchi. Yay! This is one of the many different kinds of kimchi dishes in Korea. If you guys don't know, kimchi is a Korean traditional type of dish dish, but there's multiple different kinds of kimchi. The one that you guys know of probably is the cabbage, the Napa cabbage kimchi, which is the most common and the most popular, but there's also so many other kinds of kimchi that you may not have even heard of. All right, guys, I realized that I didn't actually explain what kimchi is, so I'm gonna explain to you guys, but first of all, please excuse my voice. It's a little hoarse. There's a little bit of a sore throat situation going on, so I will talk quietly. So kimchi is a traditional Korean side dish made of salted and fermented vegetables, and because the dish is fermented, it is really good for you. Tons of probiotics, and it's great for your gut, tons of health benefits. And there are many, many, many different kinds of kimchi, but as I mentioned, the most common form is the Napa cabbage kimchi, which I do have a vegan recipe for on my channel, so I will link that down below. And one important thing to note is that traditionally a lot of kimchi recipes use some sort of fish ingredients, so it's actually not vegan or vegetarian, but good news is that it's really easy to veganize, and I actually find the vegan versions very tasty and more refreshing. So today I'll be showing you guys how to make my mom's vegan version of bu kimchi. My mom makes the best water kimchi. It is so, so good. So I'm so excited to bring you guys this. And we also are planning on filming her cucumber kimchi recipe and also her radish kimchi recipe, which both are so good. I think these three, like this one, the cucumber and the radish kimchi are definitely like amongst my favorites. So yeah, this is the water kimchi. And to me, this is like super refreshing. Let me, let me see if I can explain this to you. It's hard for me to explain. <laughs> to me, it tastes so fresh and you eat it cold, okay? So it's cold. Let me just... Oh, it's so fresh. It's like slightly spicy, but not really. It's like pretty... It's very mild, actually. It's not spicy at all for me. Ever so slightly pickled. I love it for the summer. It is so, so good. I just like have little like spoonfuls of it as I'm eating like something else. It like works great as a side dish. Yeah, I kind of want you guys to try it and tell me what you think. Maybe it's an acquired taste. Maybe only Koreans like it. Who knows? But either way, I'm gonna show you guys how to make it. This is the vegan version of water kimchi. Let's get started with the recipe. So the first step is to add four liters of water into a large pot and you're also going to add in a third cup of flour and you're going to want to bring this to a boil by turning the heat up and you want to whisk this while it's coming to a boil until there are no more clumps. So yeah, just whisk it until it is mixed well together and you just want to watch this so that the water doesn't overflow while it's coming to a boil. So after it comes to a boil, you want to take it off the heat and you want to cool this down until it's at least lukewarm. You can wait about one to two hours to let this cool or you can do this step the night before and just let it cool overnight. Apparently that's what my mom does. So yeah, it doesn't really matter how long you allow this to cool. And here are the other ingredients. It's really simple, lots of simple uh, vegetables. And while you're waiting for the water to cool, this is when you can probably prep the veggies. So the most important vegetable I would say for this recipe is going to be the Korean radish. We call this mu in Korean and you can also use daikon radish. I believe it's very similar to the Korean radish. So either Korean radish or daikon radish. And you want to peel the outside layer of the radish and then you want to cut it kind of the way that my mom's cutting it, which is into kind of thin squares or thin like triangles, just thin pieces like so. And we're using about 800 to 1000 grams or around one kilogram of the radish. So once you've cut these into kind of thin triangle or squares, you can add these pieces into a large container like so. And here's how my mom cuts it once again, just to show you guys. And once you've cut up the entire radish and added the pieces into the large container, you can now add two teaspoons of salt. Just sprinkle it evenly across the radish. 
Now we have here half a Napa cabbage. This is the cabbage that we use for the traditional Napa cabbage kimchi. And my mom says that you kind of want to focus on the inside leaves. So the leaves in the inside, you kind of want to like not use the outside layers. You kind of want to use the layers of the inside, especially the ones that are yellow. Just kind of follow what my mom is doing here. It's not a big deal if you use the outside as well. She says that it's just not as good when you use like the really leafy kind of green parts. So maybe take those out and use those for a different recipe. My mom likes to use the kind of like crunchy inside parts and this is how she's cutting it as you can see here she starts with the inside layers first cuts those up and then she kind of like cuts everything into again little bite-sized pieces and then she's gonna just mainly focus on the white parts and less of the leafy parts of the outside so we're gonna add that into the container as well so now we have a layer of the napa cabbage and now we're gonna add in another two teaspoons of salt on top of the napa cabbage and then you can mix this you can just use your hands just make sure your hands are clean we're a big fan of using hands in korea so just use your hands mix it really well and then you want to wait around 20 to 30 minutes until the napa cabbage starts to wilt a little bit okay so you want to let this wilt and um, it's going to get a bit softer and while we're waiting you can start preparing the next ingredients so we have 300 grams of onion of course make sure your onion is peeled and you're just going to cut your onion into chunks it doesn't have to be perfect because we're going to be blending this up so don't worry about making it beautiful just cut them into chunks next ingredient we'll need is some ginger we have some fresh ginger and i'm using about 20 grams we're going to add that in as well we're also going to need some garlic i would say about three to four cloves of garlic we already have it minced but it doesn't have to be minced because you're going to blend it next we're going to take two of these hot peppers actually these might have been sweet peppers but you can use hot peppers if you want it to be hot anyways we're going to take two out of like the five or six that we're using and we're also going to add that into the blender and then we're going to take a few scoops of the lovely flour water mixture and that's going to help us blend this mixture together so we're just going to take just a i don't know three or four scoops of that and add all of those uh, pungent ingredients <laughs> into the blender and then we're going to blend this along with some gochugaru so we're using two tablespoons of gochugaru which is korean red chili pepper flakes my mom says this is optional you don't have to use the gochugaru if you want it to be not spicy um i haven't tried it without the gochugaru i would recommend using the gochugaru but if you really can't do spicy then maybe leave it out and let me know how it goes so there is the blended mixture my mom says to blend it until you can't really see the kochukaru flakes basically just blend it really nicely and really well and really thoroughly maybe for a minute or so and then you can also prepare the next ingredient which is green onion for this recipe we're using five stalks of green onion and she uses the kind of white part so the first half of the green onion starting with the white part and we're just going to cut them into kind of one inch pieces and then she cuts them vertically like so into thin pieces so this is how she cuts it just just do what she's doing okay and uh, yeah just cut them into thin slices And then we're going to take the rest of those hot slash sweet peppers and then we're going to slice them like so and um yeah there's about i think four left and if you want them to look pretty you want to kind of mix up the colors i like the red and orange mixture i think it looks very nice all right guys so we have chopped up the lovely vegetables and we have prepared all the ingredients and we have waited 20 to 30 minutes for the cabbage to begin to wilt and now we can add in that pungent blended concoction into the cabbage and radish mixture so we're gonna add that in and make sure you don't waste it make sure you scrape off the sides of the blender and then we're gonna mix this so we're just gonna mix it nicely with the spatula and now it is time to add a sweetener and i asked my mom if she uses sugar but she actually said that it tastes better with a sugar-free alternative so we actually ended up adding in two packets of splenda and i believe you can use another alternative as well maybe stevia um, but i don't know i haven't tried it with stevia 
So maybe be safe and use Splenda. Anyways, so we actually ended up adding in two packets of Splenda. And then you want to add in those peppers, those green onions, and then that water and flour mixture. So basically all of those ingredients that we prepared are now coming together. And here's Nadi just chilling and being adorable as usual. <laughs> Anyways, so once you've added all of those ingredients together, you want to make sure to give it a nice mix. And then at the very end here, we're going to actually add in another three tablespoons of salt. Yes, my friends, another three tablespoons of salt at the very end here. The liquid, if you taste it at this moment, it's going to taste really salty. But once this kind of ferments and everything just kind of comes together, the vegetables will kind of absorb that salt and it's not going to be as salty. So don't worry if you taste this right now and it's like really salty, it's going to become less salty when you actually eat it like the next day. Okay, so we've mixed this really well and now it is ready to ferment. So you're pretty much done with the labor process. Now all you have to do is cover this up and let this sit in room temperature overnight. So I would say about 24 hours to let this sit and ferment overnight. And then after those 24 hours, just put your burgundy tea into a nice container and put it in the fridge. And anytime you want to enjoy it, you can put it into a nice little bowl like this and enjoy it with your meal. I'm actually really curious if you guys will enjoy this because I grew up eating this stuff. So to me, this is like so delicious and it's so refreshing. Um, but I do wonder if it's a bit of an acquired taste. Maybe it's a little weird for you guys uh, because it's like cold soup. <laughs> it's like cold pickled soup. <laughs> But um, I love it so, so much. So I really hope you guys like this as well. Uh, leave me a comment. Let me know if you've tried it and if you like it. Okay, guys. So I'm going to just explain to you guys how to enjoy this because I feel like maybe you guys need some direction. Okay. So usually kimchi is a side dish. It's not really something you eat like, like I wouldn't eat this whole bowl. Okay, Korean people, we eat slightly differently. We usually have a lot of side dishes that we just put on the table and then we eat it with like rice or maybe noodles or something. You just have a little bit of the side dishes. You don't like have to finish all the side dishes because you just put them back in the fridge or something like that. This would just be a side dish that you can keep in the fridge. You can keep it in a jar like this. And then every time or anytime you wanna eat a little bit of it, when you have like a rice meal with like a bunch of side dishes, you just have a little bit of this on the side and then you just eat it throughout, you know, the meal as like a refresher. This is like a palate cleanser almost. It's like a nice, like refreshing thing to eat between bites. So that's how I would eat it. I would not eat this whole thing in like a sitting or anything like that. I think it's too salty probably to eat all of this and it's a little bit too much. I would probably just eat like small spoonfuls of it and then just keep it in the fridge. So that is what I recommend. That's how you eat kimchi like other types of kimchi as well. Like Napa cabbage kimchi, you just have a little bit of it and same with everything else. It's like eating pickles or something, okay? You don't eat like, you know, four pickles. I mean, I don't know, maybe some people do, but like, that's not normal, okay? Okay, well, <laughs> I mean, you can do it if you want. I hope. I hope that helps. All right, you guys, so that's how you make water kimchi. Yes, I hope you guys found this helpful. Um, I do have my mom's famous Napa kimchi recipe, the traditional kimchi, the one that you always see with the cabbage. That recipe is already on my channel. I posted that a few years ago. I'm gonna link that down below if you guys are interested in making the traditional popular Korean kimchi, but this is an alternative kimchi that you could make, and I love this so, so much, almost just as much as regular kimchi, just depending on my mood, okay? So so hope you guys like it. Make sure you subscribe for the future kimchi recipes to come. The cucumber kimchi is so good and also the young radish kimchi, oh my God, it's so good. So y'all need to stay, stick around because I'm gonna show you guys my mom's famous kimchi recipes, okay? This is part of the alternative kimchi um, trilogy, if you will. Hope you guys found this helpful. If you guys need the written recipe and the instructions, I will have a blog post linked down below as always. If you guys enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And of course, if you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.